Do you ever experience the problem of weeping or cineresis in any of your recipes? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you a few tips on how to slow cineresis and how to make an amazing roasted tomato ketchup. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you recipes on how you can do these in your very own kitchen. And this week we're going to be talking about how do you delay cineresis, otherwise known as weeping, which is water coming out of stuff. How do you stop it or delay it? So. Um, remember, ring the bell, subscribe, and that way you'll get notified of our content. It comes out every single Tuesday, and we're always doing something fun. And um, I think people have been really loving our giveaways, so we're going to stick with the giveaways. There will be a giveaway clue coming up at some point during this episode. All right, so talking about cineresis, uh, which is like a little scientific sounding, let's <laughs> break it down to its basic levels. You know, it's, it's water coming out of stuff. What is happening? when that happens. So I want to get into what is cineresis and, and what is weeping and where do we see it in food, right? Because we, we see it at home a lot. And if you've never heard of it, and you may be wondering what exactly are we talking about, if you've ever opened up, let's say, sour cream or yogurt, mm -hmm. let's say Greek yogurt mainly, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get that little bit of water that's sitting on top. Yep. And if you're like my wife, you have to go over to the sink and dump it down because for some reason that's bad. <laughs> but it's natural. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that are happening there. Mm -hmm. Also, whenever you open up a ke ketchup container and that first squirt comes out as this liquid, that's cineresis. That's the water, you know expelling itself from the contents of the food and people look at it it's not the most sightly thing right mm -hmm. we, we tend to look at it as, as it's bad but it's really pretty natural but there's ways to slow it down yeah so when we talk about um slowing it down what ingredients have we found to be most effective in that process so what you want to do is you want to thicken whatever liquids in there and that's going to slow it down and it's going to help prevent it from coming out. And when it does come out, it'll be easy to mix back in. And mm -hmm. those ingredients are gonna be uh, xanthan gum, in this case, perfected xanthan gum, because it's so easy to use, and locust bean gum. Okay, and I see you have prepped here a few examples. Can you talk about kind of what's happening on this display here? The sure. looks like a few components. So we have a, a bunch of different things, right? So we have our ketchup that we've made. We made a bunch of different types of ketchup because we want you to be able to make ketchup at home and have it prevent, you know, with a very small amount of cinerasis. Mm -hmm. So this is our ketchup, and you, as you can see, it's nice and thick, but it doesn't have any water leaking. That was a bold up. move. I, 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 <laughs> I've tested it, but now I can do this right onto here. Now, right. remember what that looks like, but if I pour a little bit of, see, I got a little bit of that yellow water that comes off, and this does not have the xanthan gum inside of it. Mm -hmm. So that xanthan gum is going to really thicken up that water that's inside of the ketchup and prevent it from dripping out or just raising to the top. Will it eventually have some cineresis? Yes, it's natural. Mm -hmm. But I think we should really talk about like, what is the cineresis, mm -hmm. right? So cineresis is in whatever network you're making, whether you're making a gel or you're making some sort of uh, cultured milk or even a ketchup, over time, whatever network that's in, let's say it's the, um, the pectin that's naturally in the tomato from the ketchup, or it's the agar in here, or it's the, the milk proteins or the gelatin, that network will tighten. And as it tightens, it pushes the water out. Mm -hmm. Now, if that water's slightly thickened, or if that water is also slightly gelled with something else, like a locust bean gum, when it's pushed out, it is less noticeable, right? Mm -hmm. It won't just dribble off the top. It'll be thickened on top and then it can be easily mixed back in. And that's what we want to prevent. So you can see here with the agar gel, this one doesn't have locust bean gum, but this one does. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some degree of separation, yep. right? But you can definitely see it's about 25 to 50% less water weeping yes. out of the gel itself. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to be making something like a yogurt, it's very difficult because you don't want that Greek yogurt to have a chewy or gel right. texture, right? So if you wanted to take that yogurt and make it into uh, a whipped type of yogurt where you can add in a gelling agent or a uh, thickening agent, it may be a little bit different of a texture and that's something you can do there. But whenever you're making a Greek yogurt, there's going to be some degree of that separation. Mm -hmm. Same with like a sour cream and whatnot. And then all the way into gelatin. Remember, whatever network it's in, it's eventually going to tighten up because over time, right, it restricts the water, 
and pushes it out. Gelatin's a really big culprit of it, and you okay. can see the water that's on top. And I gave you yeah. a little towel that you can actually dab and just show because it'll pull away from the sides, and if it's covered, the water will come off. And mm -hmm. if it's not covered, it'll dry yeah. out and it'll I just see. evaporate, right? So we get some, some weeping around the sides. Yep. Yeah. And I think you bring up a very good point with um, texture, which is kind of a concern that a lot of people have once I start adding gums. Is it going to change the texture of what I'm doing, which people <laughs> don't want? So how much are we really adding in here in order to, you know, get the benefits of it without ruining the texture? Yeah, we're, so we're just adding such a small amount. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, for xanthan gum, it could be anywhere between 0.1 to 0.5 percent. Uh, so that's half of a percent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an extremely small amount. You just want to thicken up any extra water that's kind of lingering in mm -hmm. there that could come out at the top. You don't want to add so much to the point where it is then going to be, you know, slimy or sticky, you know, whatever the, the properties of the gum is. Mm -hmm. We also, with our um, ketchup here, we added a little bit of uh, Ultratex, Ultratex 4 or Ultratex 3, whichever one you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just going to help thicken it up. So we have made a bunch of different types of ketchup, which we should probably get into now. Okay. And these different type of, types of ketchup have different thickening properties naturally. So if one is a corn ketchup and one is a banana ketchup, they're naturally Ooh, going to be two different textures, mm -hmm. right? The corn is going to have a higher water content. The banana is going to have a starchier, um, you know, thicker, uh, not content, but like a less water content. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you're making it, you may have to add a little bit or a little less of the yep. uh, perfected uh, xanthan and of the um, ultra text. Okay. So let's get into our, our basic recipe. We wanted to make one of the best tomato ketchup. So we took our tomato paste and we roasted it with some sun-dried tomatoes. We wanted to get it really kind of rich and roasty. Mm -hmm. So I have it here and I can put it right down inside there. Now we made a bunch of different types, but this is, the most basic, you know, if you want a really nice bumped up tomato ketchup, we have vinegar. You can play with the vinegar. Say you want to add a different type of vinegar, malt vinegar, red wine vinegar, you could absolutely do that. White sugar, the same goes for this. You want to add brown sugar, you want to add, uh, you know, sugar in the raw, or something like that, you can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. Little bit of MSG, optional. This will just help the, you know, savoriness. Come mm -hmm. out. We love MSG. We love MSG. <laughs> salt. Okay. Everything needs salt. A little bit of ultra text. And that's three or four over there. That's four. Okay. But three or four are pretty interchangeable. Mm -hmm. If you have an aversion to corn, you can use the other. So. Mm -hmm. And then I have my perfected xanthan gum. And use, as you can see, I'm just throwing it in there. The best thing about the perfected xanthan gum is that it's partially hydrated, which means it can just mix right in very easily without having to worry about mm -hmm. clumps. Yep. So I'm just going to yeah. press this down just a little bit. So if you're using a standard xanthan gum because you may already have it, what modification do you think they should use to make sure they don't get clumps? The only modification I would do is mix it in with your sugar. Okay. So if you dry mix it with the sugar, it's not going to clump. Uh, but if you're using perfect, perfected xanthan gum, you can throw it right in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, just blend this really quickly until it is smooth, and that's as simple as that. And then you can do this with all different types of flavors. So like I said, we have a corn, we have a, t a banana, we have a green tomato, we have a pepidou, we have a kimchi, uh, we have tomato, and then we have fun ones that are really different and kind of odd. Mm -hmm. We made a beef jerky ketchup. Mm -hmm. So we were going through this and just seeing what we could make. And obviously tomatoes, number one. Then we went through our vegetables and then we started to get into fruits. And then we started to get into other things. But beef jerky, we had some lying around and we said, let's just see. Yeah. And it is surprisingly delicious. <laughs> uh, any beef jerky will work, uh, but we find that the lower quality beef jerky is the best for it. All right, so I'm just gonna get this mixed up, blend it in. Okay. And then we're good to go. Now, Jane. Yes. I want you to try that one over there because that's a very right. special ketchup we made. Right. This will pique a lot of people's interest. You know, are you going to tell them what it is before I eat it? I want you to try it. I mean, okay. if they can see it on camera, there's a little label on it. Oh, okay. I totally missed that. So I have not tried this before. Scott wanted me to try it on camera. Ooh, it's super good. Hmm. That's really nice. So I finished this ketchup mm. over here. What is that ketchup when, you, when you're tasting it, Jamie? What, what are you getting? Onions. What kind yeah. of onions? Uh, are they caramelized onions? Yes, they are <laughs> caramelized <laughs> onions. Yeah, yeah so we, we caramelized onions mm. and we replaced the tomato paste 
basically mm -hmm. in the base recipe with caramelized onions, and we found that it is delicious. We, we've raved about it, we've talked about putting it on a burger quite a bit. And as you can see, that yeah. this tomato oh, paste, or this tomato ketchup, you know, is really nice. Uh, you can see it's flowing beautifully. It has a rich, rich, dark color, because we roasted mm -hmm. it off, and we roasted off the sun-dried mm -hmm. tomatoes. And we just wanted to make the nicest tomato ketchup that we could possibly make that is very full of flavor. But this is up to you. What do you think you could make, right? You can take this recipe, you can replace the uh, you know corn, the banana, whatever it is in this recipe, and you can make any ketchup that you want. And that's the fun thing, because then you can get into fun recipes like here. We have moules frites, which is one of my favorite dishes. It's a Belgian dish, but we made it mm -hmm. a little bit different. Is I, I cooked fries. some mussels, I put the fries on top, a little bit of chive, a little bit of cilantro, and then we have a kimchi ketchup, oh. which basically we replaced the uh, the tomato paste with some kimchi, and you can see we have a beautiful moules frites Ooh. with a nice kimchi ketchup I on the top. Kimchi ketchup. I love the kimchi ketchup. We also we made a bunch of other tests. This isn't all the tests. If you uh, follow us on mm, Instagram, nice too. we were doing a lot of testing with a bunch of different things, and mm -hmm. some worked, some didn't. I mean, they all made ketchup, but some of them were delicious or more delicious than others. Yeah. And that's a nice segue to this week's drawing. Exactly. Which is, if you want to enter to win one 400 gram bag of locust bean gum, plus one 400 gram bag of Perfecta Xanthan gum, so two bags of locust and Perfecta Xanthan, you can leave in the comments below something that you would like to turn into ketchup that we haven't okay. already done, which is super fun. Or maybe you've done it and you're like, this is already the best. So let us know what do you think would make a great ketchup. And for the next two weeks, leave your comments, and then we'll pick a winner at the end of those two and weeks. And I'll, I'll add on to that. Mm. With the winner, whoever wins, I will make that ketchup. Ooh. All right. I will make that ketchup, and we will put it on our uh, social media. <laughs> now you're going to get terrible flavors. Well, just it's just so going to be one. <laughs> it's just going to be one. I don't have to make them all. I just have to make the winner. Haggis. Yeah, and ketchup. haggis ketchup it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think just to, before we wrap up, so I think one question that I can totally see coming up, which is, you know, uh, be, a lot of people are aware that there are synergies between different gums. Yeah. So I'm, I can hear the question like, well, what if I just put my locust bean gum with my xanthan gum? Do, do I even get a better effect? So you can, but when you mix locust bean gum and xanthan gum, they do have a synergy, which basically is uh, one plus one equals three. So it's a, some that's greater than its parts. You will create out of two thickening agents, a gel. Mm -hmm. This just happens naturally with a bunch of different uh, types of gel. You should look into it a little bit. I mean, if you're gonna do the testing, you're probably gonna know by the end of it. But yeah, if you wanted to add locust bean gum and xanthan, I would do it at a very low ratio because you are going to create a gel out of two thickeners. Yeah. So it, it, that's, uh, that takes a little bit of know-how, but it's not going to affect it in a way that's going to be inedible. It just may have a slightly different texture. Right, so that's not what you're going for. Um, but as always, have fun and experiment. Why not, right? So when on Instagram and today, you can see a lot of different fun ketchups being made. Yep. It'll, it'll be available on this channel in a couple of days. Remember, leave your comments below, enter the drawing, and you can get our recipes in the links in the description below. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wei. And I'm Scott Jarrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.